Yesterday I decided to disassemble an electric motor and I decided I was going to film the entire process and show you how it's done. But I failed. How did I fail, I hear you ask. An electric motor is the easiest thing of all to pull apart and put back together. Well, watch on and see what went wrong. In this video, we're going to look at pulling apart this. This is an old pull pump motor. And I'm gonna take you through the process of dismantling it so that we can see what's inside and the sorts of things you need to keep in mind when you are doing this kind of job out in the field. So the first thing we're gonna need is some tools. This has some screws that we need to undo and we're gonna need some spanners to do that. So I have with me these spanners here. These are C spanners and ring spanners because obviously the top looks like a C and the bottom is a ring. So I have these spanners which I can use. I also have at my disposal, I have some sockets. So I can take one of these and then take a corresponding socket and I can put it onto the nut and probably take it off that way. Either way will work. I also have a shifting spanner, get it right, a shifting spanner. Uh, we can use this too if we're out in the field and we don't have some of these other tools. But more than likely, if you're doing this job, you are probably working in part of the industry where you do this all the time. So you're more likely to have some of these more specialized tools for this job. So I'm actually going to start with, we might try doing it with this one first. So we need to find the correct size. So to do that, I'm gonna take the socket and I'm gonna put it up against the screw or the bolt until I find the right one. That's definitely way too loose. The other one was a bit too tight. So it's a matter of just literally going through the process of elimination. There we go, that one feels pretty good. Oh, no, that one's a bit loose too. There we go, that one sits nicely on the motor. So I'm now going to be able to take it apart. Now, the size of my wrench is different to the size of the socket. So I need an adapter. In this case, in this case, I do not have an adapter. Well, that makes life hard, doesn't it? I actually don't have an adapter for this socket. They provide me with a socket set without the correct adapter. Wonderful, okay. If that happens to you out in the job, and it possibly could happen, then we need to revert to our spanners. So let's use our spanners. Again, I'm doing the same process that I just tried doing with the sockets. I'm actually going to go through each spanner until I find the right one. There we go, that feels good. So I'm going to spin this around. Now, before I start this, all I wanna do is take these screws out or these bolts out. Um, but this one in particular at the front is a little bit rusted. So how do I fix that? Well, I need some lubricant. And in this case, I have this can here. This is WD-40, uh, and it's basically just a lubricant which once I spray on here, should help this bolt come out when I start trying to move it with the spanner. So I give it a little bit of a spurt, but I'm gonna put that upright. Gravity is your friend. So. There we go. A little bit there, a little bit up here and let that sit for a couple of minutes, and then we can actually take that apart. And it should come apart fairly easily. Now, when you are doing this, sometimes you will come across bolts and screws that are really hard to take off. And occasionally you might need to just give them a bit of a tap with a hammer with your spanner, but not hitting them so hard that they are going to break your spanner, obviously. Um, these things are generally put together 
up in the, uh, in the factories, so they are going to be very tight. And if they've been sitting out there in the weather over the years, then obviously it's going to be a little bit harder. So I'm going to use this. This is a ball pane hammer, uh, more of an engineering uh, heavy industry type hammer. Um, most of the time we would be using a claw hammer if we're out on a construction site, but if we're working on in an industry, heavy industry, we'd probably use a hammer like this. At the end of the day, a hammer's a hammer really, as long as you're belting things with it, it doesn't really matter. So give it a bit of a tap, there we go. Tapping anti-clockwise and as you can see, that came off really nice and easily now with the lubricant on there, fantastic. And away we go. So when you're doing this, obviously make sure that the spanner is actually sitting nice and flush on the, the actual bolt so that when you give it a tap, it actually moves around and it doesn't round off the head of the bolt. There we go. All right, so when I'm taking these things apart, ideally I want to keep all this in storage somewhere. If I'm taking part to replace something, maybe I've got to order a part inside here, maybe I've got to order a bearing or something, I don't want to lose all these bits and pieces I'm taking off, all these screws and bolts. So I really should be putting these into maybe a little tray. Maybe I'm tagging it, writing on what it was, where it came from, um, and then put that aside maybe on a shelf somewhere out of the way where no one's going to play with it or move it. The other thing you should do, and this is definitely more of a more modern thing that we never used to be able to do, is you take your mobile phone and take photos with your phone because that way you can take photos as you go through the disassembling process. So when it comes back to reassembling it, you can just look back at those photos and just go in reverse order, really. So uh, very, very simple, easy way to keep track of what you're doing. There you go. As you can see, I didn't put any spray on that particular one because this one looked pretty good. It looked like it was in good condition, so I didn't have to worry about it. All right, I'm now going to go ahead and take off all the other screws or bolts. Okay, I have taken this end cap off um, and now the cabling, which we disconnected previously to this video, uh, is just there and I've just got to pass that through this hole at the very top and then there we go. Now, inside the motor, the first thing I'm going to see is this whopping big thing here. And if we read it, we can see it actually tells us some information about this. This is actually a capacitor, and the capacitor is there to help kickstart the motor. So this is called a capacitor start motor. Most motors will have capacitors on them, and quite often when you come across a motor that's no longer working, it could just be that the capacitor has basically failed and you need to replace the capacitor. Um, when you are working on these things though, please keep in mind a capacitor works like a short-term battery. So it charges up and then it can fire off a fair bit of current. So before you really work on this, you need to make sure that this capacitor is discharged correctly. Uh, and to do that, you just basically short them out and then that will discharge and it's safe to work on so you don't get an electric shock. Um, so I'm just taking off the rubber cap there and it literally just goes on with some lugs just push lugs and I can pull those push lugs off and that will then take the capacitor off. And again, as I said before, you should always be taking photos as you go so that you know where to put everything back together again in the correct spot. So capacitor has now come apart. And we've taken that off the motor, so we can put that aside, mark it, make sure you can see what the markings were on it. If it's hard to read, then you may need to, to test it. You may need to look at the manuals and drawings as well to, 
to identify the exact type of capacitor that you need to replace, should you need to replace that. Okay, so I'm taking that off. Now, I'm going to take off the rubber cap just so I can put it with my capacitor so I don't lose it. There we go. Okay, so now I've taken that apart. Now I want to try and take the rest of this motor apart. Now this is gonna be a little bit tricky because looking at it, I can see here, I can see the bearing sitting there, the end bearing. And I know if I undo these screws or these, these nuts, I should say here, this should pull away, but I'm a little bit concerned at the front here, I have this plastic housing that for some reason doesn't seem, I can't see any way to get this off. So we're going to undo that and we're gonna see, see what happens. It might be, we'll find, we'll find some way of getting it off. So let's do that. Now, different size, so I've gotta use different size spanner. Okay, I've taken off all of the screws. Interestingly enough, these are actually a self-tapping type screw, um, so they're not a threaded machine screw. Um, before I go any further, I should mention the following. If I had an exploded view diagram, then I could see how all this was put together, so I would know which screws to take off and when to take them off in which order. It'd make my life a little bit easier. I don't have that, so I'm kind of guessing as I go. Um, the one thing that is clearly obvious to me right now, and you can't tell, but I can smell this motor. This motor has clearly burnt out. Um, there is a particular pungent smell that you get from burning electrical wiring. And once you smell it, you never forget it. And I can smell it very, very clearly, which tells me that whatever is wrong with this motor is definitely the winding somewhere has burnt out. And if I'm having a close look, it looks, I can even see what looks like some burnt wirings and I'm pretty much confident that that's what was the problem with this motor. Um, if I just look in the end, I'll, if, I can, if I can hold the camera uh, so you can actually see, you might be able to see into that, that section as well. And you can have a look there and notice that it's fairly burnt as compared to the other part of the motor there. Okay, so now we're going to try and remove part of this. And this may or may not work. We shall see. All right, so something is definitely happening there because it's now coming apart. Um, but as I suspect, my problem I think is going to be this part of the front. Uh, there must be a way for this to come off. Let's get some screwdrivers onto it. I'm actually gonna use some of my older screwdrivers for this. Uh, I don't want to break any of my newer ones. Okay, that definitely seems to be locked in behind this plastic shroud and there doesn't seem to be really a way of easily getting that off. Okay, there is, there is a nut there. We're gonna squirt that with some um, WD-40. We're gonna see if we can get that off. We'll see how we go.
Okay, I've gone and got myself a pair of multi-grips. I think I'm gonna need it for this. And I'm gonna hold on to this part of this flywheel, whatever you like to call it. And I'm gonna try and get that off, try and get that nut off um, by putting on a spanner and turning it. Hopefully this is gonna work. That is coming free now, which is good. It was a little bit hard to start with, but again, using some of that WD-40 lubrication allows us to get that nut off. And hopefully, once this comes off, hopefully we can get the flywheel off. Okay, this is really gunked up. I've gone and grabbed a rag, trying to clean it up a bit. It's not coming off as easy as I thought. Um, so I'm gonna keep persevering and see where we go. Okay, um, this thing is proving rather difficult. It is leaking oil and water everywhere. Uh, so I'm gonna have to tidy up and have another look at this. They're usually these sorts of things, there's usually like a little grub screw or something that holds the wheel on the front and it's usually very easy to take off. I cannot find anything at all. I can't even see if there's a thread for it to come off. Um, so it is, is proving to be a little bit difficult. Um, all the oil and water leaking everywhere. Nasty, it stinks. This is why I don't work in heavy industry. I hate this stuff, but you might enjoy it. I don't know. I'm gonna take a break, I'm gonna tidy up, and I'm gonna come back to this. We'll see how we go. It is what it is. As electricians, we do find solutions. I will find a solution to this. Break time. Okay, so it is the next day and I have given up. Well, not really given up, but I have failed. I could not get that flywheel off. In fact, here is the motor sitting in a bucket with a towel at the bottom soaking up all the oil and water that was still oozing out of this motor. Um, and there was no way I could figure out how to get this plastic flywheel off the top. In fact, um, this center, nut, center thread piece was so destroyed, um, even when I was taking the nut off and I was trying to manipulate it, it, it was just so corroded, it was just crumbling away. I couldn't even hold onto it when I was trying to use some multi-grips or something. Um, and it became clear that this plastic flywheel enclosure part on the front was pressed on. Um, and that means that it wasn't with a reverse thread, which quite often happens when they, they'll screw something on in a, um, on a reverse thread so that it doesn't come off when it's moving. And you can just hold onto it with some multi, multi grips and undo it and it comes off. There didn't seem to be any way that would work. 
I would suggest this has been pressed on. And the disappointing thing about this is because it's made of plastic, that even if I put a bearing puller on here, and a bearing puller is essentially a clamp with a shaft through the middle, the shaft sits on the center point, and as you tighten it up, the clamp pulls up and pulls off the bearing. Even if I put a bearing puller on here, this would more likely break. It's only made out of plastic, and um, it just goes to show the kind of society we are currently living in where really items are now made um, really for one use and that's it. You can't repair them as much as you may have been able to in the past. So this is kind of very much the throwaway society. These pumps, to be honest, this motor, if I was to try to repair it, the amount of time that I would have to spend to try and get this off. And if I couldn't get this off, I would have to break it off. And if I broke it off, I'd have to get another part put it on. By the time I fixed all this up, it would probably cost me way more than it is to buy a whole new pump. Um, these pumps are worth about $200, $250. So think about your time. If it takes you an hour to pull it apart, plus you gotta replace a whole bunch of parts that you broke to get it off because the way they build it, it adds up. And realistically, it's cheaper to buy a new motor. So there we go. I failed. Hopefully, that won't happen again. Um, the next motor I plan pulling apart, um, I hope won't have plastic parts on it and we'll be able to pull it apart properly and actually have a look at it. So there you go. It doesn't always end well for us as electricians. Sometimes we come across problems like this, which just the way it is in this 21st century. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something from this video and I hope you've learned something from this video. And I'll see you next time.